Greetings, I'm DK Roster. Welcome back to the TTT News. We are happy to be speaking with Managing Director of the Environmental Management Authority, Hayden Romano, and he joins us to discuss the national environmental policy. Welcome, Mr. Romano. How are you doing? Uh, doing very well, and uh, good evening to you, and thank you so much for having us. We're very honored to be here today. Our supreme pleasure, and it's a very timely conversation. I think it was started in 2018, but what is the National Environmental Policy about? Well, the National Environmental Policy is one of the requirements of the EM Act. The EMA is required to prepare a national environmental policy for the government of Trinidad and Tobago. So it's not the EMA's policy, it's all of our policy. It's the policy, it's the national environmental policy for Trinidad and Tobago. The first time this was done was in 1998. It was revised in 2006, and this latest version is the 2018 version which would have been done in, in 2018. And of course, it went through all the hoops. It went, it went to the cabinet and it was approved and laid in parliament in November of 2018. This policy is what is supposed to guide all of us. And we're talking members of the public, government entities and agencies, the private sector, uh, NGOs, CBOs, it's supposed to invite a, 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 a direct all of us with respect to how we treat and deal with the environment to ensure that we meet our sustainable development goals. So um, it, 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 is, it is the linchpin for environmental management in Trinidad and Tobago. But that's supposed, that, that is supposed to guide all of us. That feels like a big suppose, Mr. Romano. So well, it's... it's Sorry, go ahead. No, so in terms of monitoring, saying, okay, well, we're following this policy, we're using it at that lynch when you're talking about who, whose responsibility is it to say, okay, well, this is something that is being used as policy is created and implemented. Well, so this is, is, is one of the, the elements that, 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 that we hope to continue doing, uh, DK. Uh, public awareness, uh, public education. Because we have done some work with the government entities because just to remind them that section 31 of the Environmental Management Act says that all of us, including you guys at TTT, must comply with um, the national environmental policy. All your programs, all your procedures, must be in compliance with the envir national environmental policy. So, so we are, I mean, and this is all part of the campaign in terms of increasing public awareness and education on the NEP, the national environmental policy, to ensure that people not only read the policy, which is available on the EMA's website, www.ema.co.tt, but also understand the policy and use it in terms of developing all their programs and activities. Um, we at the EME, and, 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 and I'm, I, I mean, I can say, I mean, although we've had policies in 1998 and 2006, um, this is the first time we've actually used the NEP in developing our strategic plan 2022 to 2026. And I'm wondering whether or not that would put some teeth into the EMA. And I say teeth because sometimes I hear people say, call the EMA, and then people say, eh, what are we calling them for? <laughs> so in terms of like using this yeah, NEP into the strategic vision moving forward, how does that change the ambit or what it is the EMA is doing at this point in time? Well, you know, and, 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 you know, one of the things that we have to do, and clearly, I mean, I, 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 um, is to, you know, ensure that people know that this NEP, this National Environmental Policy, is not the EMA's policy. It's 
all it's it's government policy it's the policy of the government of the republic of trinidad and tobago so when people say that the ema does not have teeth um they are slightly misguided in terms of the the, the role the functions and the responsibilities of the ema because um, they, 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 they appear to think that, that the EMA is responsible for all things under the sun. But the EMA, of course, is controlled by its legislation, which is the EM Act. And I think people also forget that 25 years ago, when the EM Act came into being, and really it came out of an environmental movement that, 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 that um, the big culmination would have been Rio uh, 1992. And um, it, the, the, it was the first time this type of legislation was coming into Trinidad and into a number of other countries. And therefore the government decided it, it wanted soft legislation. So really we were depending on citizens, on companies to do the right thing. 25 years later, we must recognize that in many cases, this must, has not happened. And of course, we will need some amendment to our legislation to ensure that citizens do the right thing. Uh, the challenge with the amendment to the EM Act is the EM Act is majority legislation and therefore it must be supported, be supported by all sides in the parliament. But that is something that has to happen. But if we go back to the NEPDK, in 2018, when this policy was revised, there was a lot of, 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 of consultations. Um, it started off with a, a survey in 2016 in terms of um, the, the, the nationwide envir national environmental awareness survey, where we looked at the, we, we did knowledge attitudes and practices of the population. We had a lot of focus group meetings uh, we did a whole lot of, of literature uh, um, uh, uh, reviews, and we also had with us uh, a, a really distinguished panel of experts, um, um, the, the, um, the um, DAX driver from the, the Energy Chamber, Professor Agard with respect to climate change, um, Dr. Carol James um, with respect to community groups and sustainable development. And all this input is what ended up with this 2018 policy. So the 2018 policy really reflects what the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago are, are looking forward with respect to environmental uh, management and sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago. And when we return, we are going to be talking about some of those main priorities as outlined by the NAP. We're doing so with the Managing Director of the Environmental Management Authority, Hayden Romano. Stay with us. We'll return with more. And welcome back. We are going in depth on the national environmental policy. We're doing so with management or the managing director of the EMA, Hayden Romano. And just before we took the break, Mr. Romano, you were speaking about some of the players, some of the, the, the logistics that went into this latest or the 2018 edition. And well, with that in mind, though, what are main priorities and how are things thematically outlined in the policy? So coming out of all these consultations uh, that, that we had, um, we um, six priority areas were developed. And these six priority areas are sustainably managing natural assets, improving the local environment, evolving a greener economy, fostering an environmentally responsible society, addressing climate change and environmental and natural disasters and protecting environmental and human health through pollution control. There is no number one and there is no number six. All of these are of significant importance because this is what the people of Trinidad and Tobago told us. 
I think sometimes when you try to go down a hierarchy and say, okay, we're paying more attention to this than this, the things that get, what's the term, lost in the source? So no. as opposed to trying to deal with everything, uh, all hands on deck and equal importance, as you just intimated. But at the same time, is there a plan of action? You spoke so, about building awareness. How, what, what, what is, what's that plan of action look like? So in terms of a strategic approach, and we have adopted a strategic approach, and the, 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 the government has appointed a National Council for Sustainable Development. And this council is supposed, not supposed to, is tasked with the responsibility of examining the, the implementation of the NEP. Members of the council um, are, and, and I'd really like to mention their names. I mean, um, the EME is the chairman, um, uh, Kishan Kumar Singh uh, from the Ministry of Planning and Development is the, uh, the, the, the deputy chairman. Um, we have Yvonne Nimakar, Nimacharan from the Ministry of Finance, um, John Agard from UWI, Samantha Chedi from UTT, Mark Lukwan from NGC, uh, Takri Driver, Dax Driver from Energy Chamber, uh, Ryan Allard from Environment Tobago, Linford Beckles from THE, Shalini Gopi from Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries, Diane Rampadarat from Ministry of Agriculture, Denny um, Dipchan Singh from Ministry of Agriculture, he's the conservator of forests, Alyosha Wontke from ERIC, um, Akila Jaramoji from uh, Fonzaman uh, um, 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 Rehabilitation, and Anthony Ramnarain, who's an environmentalist. So the first step was to determine the priority areas to focus on. The council decided that we couldn't leave any priority area behind. And therefore the council decided that we would look and we will add, um, um, put in place working groups for all the priority areas. Then we wanted, we decided, now remember, the policy has six priority areas 24 thematic areas and 252 policy statements. So the decision was made that with respect to the priority areas, we will focus on a number of, on one, one, on one thematic area for each priority area and in one case, because it was agriculture and coastal um, 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 development, we decided we'll focus on two key on, on two. So in um, for, for working group one, which is protecting the environment through human health and control, which is led by the chairperson is uh, Shalini um, Gopi, um, the decision was made to focus on priority area uh, 2.04, which is solid and hazardous waste. And um, it fits in really nicely because the EMA waste rules will become law at the end of this month. So, so that fits in very nicely in terms of getting things done because yes, we do have a, a major in, uh, in implementation challenge. With respect to the so the, the priority area, um, sustainably managing natural assets. The, the, the focus that we are looking on at this point in time is coastal and marine area management and agriculture. Because agriculture management, because the Road to Recovery Committee really had an agriculture focus. So we decided in that priority area, we would look at, at, at two um, at, 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 at two thematic areas. With respect to the area of improving the local environment, um, the, 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 the area that we're looking at is planning and human settlements. Because there is a big concern, uh, DK. Um, we hear lots of complaints about residents where um, their, their areas are becoming commercialized. 
um, they thought they were living in a residential area and suddenly you have all these bars developing uh, or garages developing and, 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 and it's a big issue. I mean, the EME gets lots of complaints with respect to that. And therefore, and, and of course, all these unplanned, unplanned uh, uh, settlements and uh, um, the, the threat to our natural environment, including the threat to the wetlands, the threat to the forests. And therefore, the decision was made to, to look at both planning and human settlements. With respect to the, 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 the fourth priority area, which is involving a greener economy, the decision was made to look at economic transformation. Because if we're looking, like the rest of the world, in terms of greening our economy, I mean, we, we need to look at what does that mean? What are the requirements? What does green in the economy mean? And, 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 and that area um, is, is, is the reason why, why we choose um, economic transformation. And Mr. Romano, uh, this is all well and good. Um, and this sounds fabulous. But at the same time, <laughs> the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So what kind of things are we looking at to concretize these things that we're looking at in terms of timelines and saying these are the deliverables but that we want by certain time frames so so we have determined the policy statements that we are uh, looking for focus attention we are still looking at potential sources of funding because everybody's doing this work basically voluntarily with the other work that they have to do so um, it is so so and but but the hope is because of the mix, because of the mix of both private sector, public sector, NGOs, that we will get support from all these groups. And, and the working groups are busy trying to develop action plans in terms of timelines. And it's moving slowly, DK, because of the, the, the resources that we have. But the expectation is that in the last quarter of 2022, we will have some action plans in terms of knowing where we are proceeding with respect to the priority areas. Last quarter of 2022, but in the last one and a half minutes that we have, how do people contact if they want to partner, if they want to, if they want to become uh, stakeholders who are a little more engaged? How do they help? A little further. They surely can contact the, 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 um, the EMA um, information at ema.co.tt or call our telephone numbers and, and, and speak to, 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 to the receptionist who will direct you, uh, which is 226 for EMA, um, um, or go to our um, website um, and, 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 and fill in um, whatever information you would like to get from us. Um, but the working group chairmen, of course, are contacting people all over in, in terms of getting their input, because this cannot happen unless we have on hand, all hands on deck. Um, it, is a, it is a big, it, 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 it is a big, um, a big bite. Um, this is the first time we have a National Council for Sustainable Development. This is the first time we're trying to monitor and evaluate how we are performing with respect to our NEP, but it's, a, it's, it's an important time because this year we're celebrating 50 years since that conference in Stockholm in uh, Sweden in 1972. And of course the UN is looking to see how, uh, what is Trinidad and Tobago going to be doing with respect to its environment and sustainable development. So, so this is a really good time for us to be focusing on our NEP and really engaging our NEP and aligning our development strategy with our um, en en environment. And we really want to thank you for engaging with us, Mr. Romano, Hayden Romano, Managing Director of the Environmental Management Authority. What a time to be alive, to be making a difference towards things that will affect us for generations to come. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Roster. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you for joining us.